Hey there, fiber friends. It's Sarah. Welcome to my yarn lab and it's time for a speed project. So I have occasionally done um, sort of speed runs or rush projects in the past uh, and they tend to be usually for my son Marshall. Um, there's a link to a Halloween costume sweater that I knit for him uh, when he was just uh, a couple months old. I knit a uh, Schitt's Creek style David Rose yoke sweater for him and he was David Rose for Halloween. And that project I um, went from concept to completion in less than five days. Well, today is Wednesday and it is Marshall's third birthday on Friday and his birthday party on Saturday. And I've got a concept and I need to get to completion by Saturday. So let's see if we can make that happen. So one of Marshall's favorite things in the whole wide world are T-Rexes. And I thought that for his birthday, especially um, because he's got so many hand-me-down toys from his brother, I wanted to make him a stuffy of a T-Rex. Um, would have got started on it a bit sooner, but chemotherapy and a hospitalization, link to a video um, in the description below going more into that, um, set me aback. So we've got uh, Wednesday evening, Thursday, Friday, and we'll get it wrapped up by Saturday morning to crochet a stuffed T-Rex for Marshall. What I did is I went on over to Ravelry and just put dinosaur into the uh, search bar for their pattern database and checked crochet off um, for the means of creating my project and I actually found this pattern uh, Theo the T-Rex I don't have the main page this is sort of page one of the pattern page um, by Sarah um, Abondio, Abondio. Um, and this pattern comes from a book of T-Rex uh, mammoths and prehistoric crochet patterns from amigurumi.com. So I will link to that below. Uh, you did have to pay for the book. It had quite a few really adorable dinosaurs in it and I thought chances are pretty good I'll end up making one, one or more of these uh, in the future. So I didn't mind buying the whole book of patterns and trying not to give the pattern information away but this is the little T-Rex guy that I'll be making here. The pattern calls to do it in fingering weight yarn since amigurumi crochet projects are typically um, mini sized, but I'm going to go ahead and use worsted weight yarn in order to size it up to have it be like a snuggly plushy. And I didn't want to purchase any yarn for this, so I went ahead and dumped my bin full of DK and worsted weight yarns, like miscellaneous ones, not ones that are intended for a project dumped that out and found two skeins of Wool of the Andes worsted weight. So this is a 100% non-superwash uh, Peruvian Highland wool yarn by Knit Picks in this color is Forest Heather for the main color. For the contrast green on the belly, I've got a skein of Wool of the Andes um, in the green tea heather. So that'll be the contrast. And then I've got some leftover assorted wool worsted weight black and white for eyes and teeth. Uh, and then I grabbed a size H uh, or five millimeter crochet hook, which I think should be a good gauge considering that worsted weight calls for a um, anything between an I and a K. And you typically want to go down uh, at least one hook size when you're doing crocheted plushies, just tightens those stitches up and makes it less likely that the stuffing will be visible from the outside. So it is 4.30 on Wednesday, August uh, the 2nd, and I need to crochet this dinosaur, um, crochet all the parts, stuff it, sew it together by Saturday morning. So let's see if we can do that. All right, so it is Thursday at just after noon, and this is the problem with rushing into these types of projects. This was my first start with that H size hook um, that I thought I would be using and at first glance it looks okay but and it'll be easier against a white background to show you this but you can see that those holes are actually um, quite large a lot of stuffing would show through here so um, ignore my earlier recommendation of drop down a hook size um, and like I said the recommended was I to J and I had dropped to an H I had to restart and I went down to a G so 
two hook size down at least um, when you're doing these crochet guys. And you can still see some, somewhat the holes on this yarn, but this would be a better, a better fabric for sure. So I started um, crocheting last night, worked through the circle and thought, geez, this looks like it's getting quite large. Um, did the two nostrils for the nose of the dinosaur and started working down the body. And I'm just not gonna have enough of this yarn uh, because I've got two skeins of this wool of the Andes, which are 50 grams each. And I am not even halfway through the head yet. And I believe I've used more than half of one of my skeins. Yeah, I've used 30 grams already. So this is a wash. Uh, I'm gonna frog it back out and from here I have two options. One would be to switch to a smaller um, pattern because uh, like I said the pattern called for fingering weight yarn and here I was thinking that that would make a really small amigurumi but the scale of this pattern is actually quite large um, and that's all on me. I didn't go on Ravelry. If I had gone on Ravelry and looked at people's yarn usage, I would have seen immediately that people were using about 600 yards of yarn, and I've got 220. So, um, it's not gonna happen with this yarn for my stash, so I either need a smaller pattern that uses up less yarn, or I'm going to pop into town today and see what I can't find locally, because I do really like the look of this pattern. So that's where I'm standing. Uh, we're, we've lost a whole half day in this. So went to Walmart, grabbed a Red Heart Comfort. Good old fashioned acrylic Red Heart, which honestly is one of the best yarns I find for making like crochet stuffies and stuff. So didn't want to have to buy yarn, but this is purchased for this purpose. So it's uh, 5 p.m. And let's start uh, start again from scratch. It's 10 o'clock p.m. Um, I've got the head. You can see snout, nostrils, sort of eyes will go here, cranium. I've got the head um, finished to the point where I need to stuff it now before I do the last five rounds to close it in. Um, using that big ball of red heart comfort. You can see I've used quite a bit from the middle already. Um, like I said, it was delusional to think that I was going to do this, um, do this on just that 100 grams of worsted weight yarn. Um, the head took about somewhere between three, three and four hours. Um, so we're going to stuff it. Don't have any polyfill at home, but I do have tons of wool batting um, that I'm unlikely to spin. All of this blue color here, I've got this little white one here. I'm going to use some, um, every time I weave in ends on projects, that they all just go in here. So I got lots of ends and I've got wool locks. So it's gonna be a mishmash uh, of stuffing materials. So, um, not sure if it's too dark probably to see, but what I did was I put sort of a lining layer of some of the blue batting. And now I'm just gonna take a really big handful of yarn ends and shove that into that sort of lining layer. And let's put some more of that blue batting in. I kind of want the batting around the outside of those yarn ends so that they don't, um, they'll have less likelihood of working their way to the surface. Yeah, kind of know what I mean there. And you always want to stuff these toys more than you think you want to stuff these toys. Grab some more of my yarn ends. Try not to get my working yarn tangled in. For funsies, let's put some of this white batting in. Um, and these bats are 100% 100 um, 100 wool and wool is a great material for stuffing toys. And you want to kind of think about the shape as you're stuffing as well. Alright, 
So that's stuffed up pretty full. Sort of put this on like a lid. And then I'll work my last couple of rounds and then uh, poke a little bit more in at the end if needed. But you can see that that's kind of looking reasonably like a snout and a head. So I'm going to finish closing this guy off tonight and I did want to make the mouth tonight and the eyes. I don't know that I'll get them sewn on but I think I will make those parts and then go to bed and then I've got um, whatever amount of time I can squeeze in during the day tomorrow and tomorrow evening. Um, that's Friday and then uh, Marshall's birthday party and presents are Saturday afternoon. So. At least I've got the head done. I think this is definitely like more than half, a little bit more than half of the size of the stuffy. So head done. Wish I hadn't wasted, you know, wasted a false start with the wrong yarn that I didn't have enough of. So um, 11.30 on Friday morning. Uh, last night I did stay up long enough to put, uh, to crochet and put his teeth on. So he's got like teeth. They kind of want to curl out. I might have to try and steam them so that they stay down. Um, teeth, and he's got like a lip that you fold over. And then I got one eye on last night and did the other one this morning. Um, and they have like an eyelid, which is really a neat detail. And then I just finished attaching his little body. And so he does look like he is head heavy, if you will. But uh, once he's got his tail and his arms and legs on, that'll fill out the bottom half a bit more. Um, he's definitely going to be of the floppy neck variety of stuffy. I did try and stuff that neck up as much as I could, but shy of using like a stiff foam or something in there, I doubt. I doubt you would get the head on this guy to sit forward just because, like I said, I think his head is about half the size of the whole, the whole dinosaur. So um, tail and belly are up next. And then lots of piddly toes for the hands and feet. Are you jumping? Yes! How old are you? Three years old. Is it your birthday? Yeah! And where did we go? To my castle! Yeah! Alright, so it's Monday morning now. Um, so obviously I didn't finish in time. Actually, uh, Friday night I started to feel pretty crappy. And Saturday morning, I went off to emerge um, because anytime I have a fever, I have to go to emerge to get my blood work done to make sure I have neutrophils and an immune system. Luckily, I did. Unluckily, I have a touch of pneumonia, um, which was actually quite rough all day Saturday and yesterday. I spent most of both days in bed. But today, I'm feeling much more like myself thanks to some antibiotics and... Let me show you the progress that I have made on this dinosaur, which Marshall's actually been playing with, despite the fact that it is just a head and a body. So I think last I showed it to you, I was going to do the mouth and get the eyes on. Um, I think that's where I was last. So I've got the mouth, which has a lip that folds down and teeth sewn on. I've got both eyes done. I've got the body done and he is super floppy necked and um and you know head heavy if you will but some of that will be balanced out with the next couple of parts so i've got the tail um which i'll need stuffing and assembly i've got the yellow belly piece and i've got the tiny t-rex arms uh, although I do need to weave, weave. you don't really need to weave in the ends um, with stuffies. What you need to do is just sort of bury them, especially because it's crochet, so it's not going to unravel. You can just bury these in once they're stuffed. So I've got the arms, I have the feet, and I just need to do the drumsticks, the legs now. So uh, we're nearly there. Oh, and some spots for the back. You do, uh, in this lighter green color, you do some decorative spots for the back. So, um, really, I mean, this has been, you know, a 
what, Thursday, Friday, like a two-day, it'll be a three-day project. I hope to finish it today. So really, this has been a three-day project since I didn't work on it at all Saturday and Sunday on account of more complications to chemotherapy. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and probably start working on those legs and save the rest of the assembly until tomorrow. Oh, and I do need to crochet a pair of little circles to put sort of a pupil in the eyes. That's where we are. Hey, Marsha, what do you got? Do you like him? It's uh, Sunday now, actually. That last little clip of Marshall playing with the dinosaur was from Tuesday. Um, I thought I had footage of um, me showing how the drumstick legs were sort of made and talking about sewing them on. It looks like I didn't capture... I don't... I, quite honestly, it's been a fog bit this last week, so I don't know if I didn't actually capture that footage or if I've lost it somewhere. Marshall was playing with me in my um, yarn lab room while I was doing the work to assemble those, but as you can see from Marshall playing with it, the dinosaur is just about finished, or was on Tuesday. So, you know, if it wasn't busy life and chemo and hospital visits, I'd say that this could have easily been fully accomplished in about two and a half days, two days if you really didn't have anything else going on, you wanted to, you know, really uh, crochet your fingers to the bones. So it's a really, I mean, crochet toys are always a great quick, in my opinion and in my experience, project. Um, so Marshall decided that he absolutely did not want any of the contrast green polka dots on his back, and for now we'll leave it at that. He also declared him finished despite that um, the dinosaur has pupils in his eyes. But you can see I've got the drumstick legs and feet on, I've got his little ineffectual T-Rex arms on in the front, and Marshall's been sleeping with his dino and playing with his dino quite a bit. Uh, today, while my family has my kids visiting uh, Drumheller in Alberta, that's actually where the Royal Terrell Museum is. It's a, a great um, archaeology. It's not really archaeology, because, but um, it's a great uh, site in Alberta where they found paleontology. That's the word, not archaeology. Um, where they found just a plethora and continue to do so of fossilized dinosaur remains. And the Royal Tyrell Museum there um, is, you know, packed to the rafters with reassembled dino skeletons. The whole town has, like, these goofy fiberglass dinosaur statues everywhere. Um, so my, I've got family visiting from Ontario, Kevin and the boys and my parents. They all went out to Drumheller for the day. I didn't go because I went for round six of chemotherapy yesterday. And I know that my energy just plummets today and I didn't want to be you know, the burden on the family or to ruin the day trip. Um, cause I know, you know, we've probably got about an hour here before it's time for me to pass out again for, for some rest. But anyways, taking this time to get the video edited up, film this last little bit, I'm going to use some black and sneak some pupils on. I know Marshall didn't want them, but you know, he looks, he'll look better with some pupils in his eyes. And then I'm going to call um, this Theo the T-Rex done, done, done. Uh, the other amazing thing that I wanted to share with you about this project. So he is, he is floppy. He's also got quite the dino booty, if you will. And as I was making him, I was shocked at the similarities to a stuffy that I have had since I was a newborn. So this is Clifford. Um, he, I believe, came paired with a... Christmassy maternity uh, nightgown is the, the the way the family story goes that my mom had when she was pregnant with me and that I like my whole childhood this is the stuffy right like you you couldn't sleep at grandma's house unless you had Clifford you couldn't go to bed at night unless you had Clifford um, cherished him forever he's lived with me everywhere that I've lived usually on a bookshelf now that I'm an adult but lots of cuddles he's cuddled with my kids he's gotten you know, gotten me through some emotional times, even as a grown-up. But the similarities between Clifford, and he's not actually, so we named him Clifford, like Clifford the Big Red Dog, but he's not like canonically Clifford, he's just a dog. He came with a Christmas hat and a scarf, and he's actually crying. Um, 
<laughs> not sure what the what the narrative is and why why this stuffy is crying, but he's crying. Anyways, my Clifford has basically the exact same body type as this dinosaur that I have made for Marshall. So you can see the the ratio of head to body size and that floppy neck, like there's no scenario where these necks are ever going to support these heads. Clifford has some bigger arms, but if you flip them around, they have the exact same booty. Like, look at that. Look at those butts. So it really makes this dinosaur even more special um, to me. I don't know that Marshall would appreciate, but because it's it's basically the exact same dimensions and body type and and shape. So that's a little fun thing that I kind of noticed as I was going. Didn't know like when I picked the pattern in in um initially didn't notice it because you really you really see it when you turn that butt around. But anyway, it's just a little fun nostalgia sentimentality there. I'm gonna go ahead and crochet um two pupils. The pattern just actually calls for like those screw in um like the black plastic eyes that you can put on stuffies. Uh, I prefer to avoid any sort of buttons or plastic bits on kids stuffies just because either they come out or they can be a choking hazard or whatever. Whereas it's real simple for me to just go ahead and crochet probably I'd say like six single crochets in a magic loop and then you know second round increase to 12 and then fasten it off and sew them on. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then I will show you the final, final, final finished um, dinosaur. And that'll be it for this project in this video. There's those pupils. Um, you know, he's a little lopsided in his face, just a little, but uh, it adds some character and personality to his look, I think. Um, I think what that really was, the sort of little bit of twist in his face, is because when you crochet in rounds, um, your beginning of round tends to spiral just a little bit. And as you can see, I tried not to accommodate that spiral and I ran my um, my beginning around straight, which has put a slight twist in his head. But that's okay. You know, the soft, plushy, smushy toy that as you could see in that little clip of Marshall playing with him already, he gets tossed around a lot. Um, the eyes, I just ended up doing a single round of six single crochets in a magic loop. And that was plenty enough, big enough, plenty big enough for the pupils. Um, and I did not mount them on the center of the eyeball, since then he would be kind of looking up in the air. Uh, I just tried to sort of get it, get them looking forward. And uh, that's it. He's good to go. Um, I will link, I think I have a really quite old video um, with some tips for crocheted stuffies that I did years ago. Um, it's probably not a great quality video, but I think that the information still stands, so that's in the description below. Um, I should say I didn't really get any footage of like the assembly of the parts, and it's all just whip stitch. So I mean, you finish a piece, leave a long tail, and I use a sharp needle. Oops, sorry. I use a sharp darning needle. I don't worry too much about going in between the stitches. I think that when you go in between the stitches, you pull gaps open. When you sort of split through the middle of the stitch, um, you don't pull gaps uh, in your fabric. And it's all just whip stitched. So I just work my way around and whip stitch, whip stitch, whip stitch. Uh, hold the next piece in place, whip stitch, whip stitch, whip stitch. If you are more inclined to want to be um, precise than I am, then you can use little locking stitch markers like this, or some people just use straight sewing pins to pin the pieces into place um, first. And maybe I should have done that on like his tummy because it is a little, little bit off centered, but I just hold the piece where I want it to go and whip stitch all the way around. Sometimes, especially on structural pieces like these legs, I do sort of a quick basting lap where I maybe only hit every other um, stitch away all the way around and then I'll go back for a second lap to really secure it and lock it in place but like these legs they're not going anywhere they're on good you know the seam between his neck and his head it's almost invisible really so it it just works out don't let the idea of assembly hold you back from making really cute uh, crocheted or knitted stuffies for your family your kids I mean give it a try they're they're quick they're easy they're a lot of fun and uh, 
just a different way to explore uh, yarn crafts. So that's what I got for today. Uh, not sure when the next video is going to come up. Like I said, I went for round six of chemo yesterday, which is actually my last round of the sort of cytotoxic chemo, the real heavy, strong stuff. But um, it's Sunday, and I know by tomorrow I'm going to be feeling like crap for probably a week. So I doubt I'll be doing too much knitting or spinning or anything. And I don't know when the next video will be up, but definitely... Definitely, you know, there'll be something else in a, a week or two here because um, I've got projects that are on the go. I've got projects that I've been sort of filming little vlogs for. Uh, might just do a general lab report update. Who knows? But you will see absolutely more of me soon. And uh, in the meantime, maybe give crocheting, uh, maybe give crocheting a plushie a try. There's so many free patterns on Ravelry and uh, it's a lot of fun to change things up in your crafting. So that's what I've got. Thanks for watching. If you've been enjoying what I've got going on on my channel, please subscribe. We're getting real close to 4,000 subscribers and I've got it in my, you know, wish list for this year to hit 5,000 by Christmas. So if you're enjoying things and you've made it to the end of this video and you're not subscribed yet, please do. In the meantime, happy experimenting with fiber because after all, this is the yarn lab. Although we're looking at more of my quilting wall lately. Maybe that's the next thing I need to work on. Bye for now.